I didn't see you there. But I thought maybe you'd like to learn about apostrophes. <laughs> Sorry, I've been, I've been thinking about how to entertain y'all all day. Um, all right, so hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about the apostrophe. All right. Now the apostrophe, the apostrophe is a very important part of the English language because it's small. People think it's not important, and that's not true. Okay. Uh, also, with things like autocorrect, uh, people have forgotten how to do apostrophes, and you need to learn this for one reason. I'm not saying it will happen overnight, but relying on autocorrect for, to do everything for you will eventually lead humanity to being like this. If you don't know, these are the people from WALL-E. They've been sitting in chairs and letting robots do everything for them for 700 years. You should all watch WALL-E. Anyway, autocorrect leads to this. So, the first thing we use apostrophes for, there are two big reasons. The first thing is to indicate possession, or when something belongs to something else. Here are some examples. Tim's hat belongs to Tim. Uh, today, today's society belongs to today. Uh, and the work belongs to a day and a day's work. All right, so these are some examples. It indicates possession. Now, there are some special rules regarding the apostrophe in words that end with S. Uh, this is the most common use. We add an apostrophe and an S if, one, the noun does not end with an, with an S. And here are some examples. Right? Uh, we also add an apostrophe and an S if the noun is singular and ends in S or an S sound. The important part here is that the noun is singular. Lots of plurals end with S but they have different rules. But for the few singular nouns that end with S, like someone's name, like Lois here, or a dress, which is singular, we add the apostrophe and an S even though it may look weird. Marks ends with an S sound, so the same rule applies. Sometimes we only need to add an apostrophe though, and this is when the noun is plural and ends with S. So, both diplomats' briefcases were missing. Diplomats indicates here, uh, indicates here uh, there's more than one diplomat. The bee's honey was good. If we only meant one bee, then the apostrophe would be between the last E and the S, and that's why it's important to be clear with our apostrophes. Listen to the elders' advice. Here we mean more than one elder. If there's only one elder, again, we would put apostrophe and S at the end, like from the last slide. Okay. So, now you know the major rules, let's learn the exceptions. Remember, this is English, and English is stupid, so there are always exceptions. IT apostrophe S and ITS may seem backwards to you. That's because we've only gone over one of the major uses of apostrophes, which is to indicate possession. IT apostrophe S is actually a contraction of it and is. ITS is the possessive pronoun. Uh, pronouns have their own possessive forms, so they do not need apostrophes to become possessive. Here are examples. On the left are correct or OK forms. On the right are incorrect or not OK forms. His, hers, yours, it's, theirs, ours. Okay. So on the left, that's okay. On the right, that is not okay. Um, and I would like to pause at this time to bring you an important message. Their selves is not a word. Ever. Just don't. Don't do it. No. Okay, the second big way we use apostrophes is for contractions. So it's to show possession and to indicate omission, right? Which most of the time means a contraction. Um, there are a few cases where, uh, like, tis or twas, twas the night before Christmas, it should be apostrophe T W A S. Um, anyway, so they're, they indicate omission. Most of the time it has to do with contractions, sometimes there are not, but those uh, usually are very old school uh, sayings there. Uh, so this slide has a bunch of stuff on it. I'm just going to put it all up there. Okay. 
uh, the apostrophe indicates that something is missing. One common mistake is writing could of the, contra the contraction of could have. They sound exactly the same when spoken. When spoken, could of, could of. But could of of is something that should never be said. Notice, too, that I'd could either mean I had or I would. We must depend on context to know the difference. Okay. So these, and these are just examples. These are not all, and I'm in the way here, aren't I? Let me get out of the way. Okay, so these, of course, are not all contractions. There, there are, you can probably think of many more, like your, uh, well, yours on there. But uh, there's lots and lots of contractions in English. Most of them have to do with throwing the subject and verb together, usually with a pronoun. Um, but, okay. So this is what your quiz is going to be like. Uh, you will be given a passage and asked how many apostrophe errors are present. Now, an apostrophe error could mean uh, that there's an apostrophe that is not there. There should be one, but there's not. It could mean that there is not an apostrophe there, but there should be. Uh, it could mean that uh, there is an apostrophe there, but it's just in the wrong place. So any one of those things would count as one apostrophe error. I'll go ahead and read this, uh, the first one to you, and then you can do the others on your own. Uh, it's never too late, uh, never too soon to start holiday shopping. In fact, some people choose to start shopping as early as January when last season's leftovers are priced at their lowest. Okay, so how many apostrophe errors are here? There are three, right? IT apostrophe S, there should be an apostrophe S here because that is it is, right? Last season's leftovers. The leftovers belong to last season, right? So it's last season's leftovers. And then this leftovers here. Uh, it does not own anything, right? This should just be plural because there's more than one. So we don't need an apostrophe here. So in this question, if this was a question on your quiz, then you would say this has three apostrophe errors on it. Okay. So there are uh, about four more practice questions in this PowerPoint uh, slide uh, presentation. This will be included with the video in your folder. So go ahead and, and I suggest looking at it through presenting presenting it to yourself rather than just looking at it in the file. This way it can sort of hide the answers for you so you can guess um, in there. Also your Bedford handbook, let me go back because I did have the section on there. Oh, and I just closed it. Hold on, technical difficulties here. Download the apostrophe. Okay, uh, section 36. I guess I could have just looked in the book in my hand right here. But it's section 36. Um, so have this, like with all my quizzes, I recommend that you have the book open with you. Have the PowerPoint open with you. If you've got a second monitor like I do or another device, have it open so you can. it can help you take the quiz. Because sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you'll get in there and it's like... Uh, you know, you'll you'll have to. Anyway, I th anyway, just use all the resources you've got, except you know, a buddy. You should be taking your own quizzes. Uh, but that's it for apostrophes, uh, and we'll see you next time. And I might have another song for you. Have have a wonderful have a wonderful day. I hope I hope this lesson on apostrophes has really has helped you in your life. Bye bye.